Okay, so we've now seen that doxorubicin and dornamycin, uh, the two amphracyclines, uh, have quite horrible side effects because of their ability to generate free radicals, and they're quite uh, toxic to cardiomyocytes in particular because of cardiomyocytes' inability to uh, divide, okay? Uh, so, um, basically we have another drug known as mitoxantrone, so this is the final DNA intercalator I want to talk about, which is capable of intercalating DNA but is not capable of generating the free radicals in the way that doxorubicin and dornomycin do. So mitoxantrone, and I want to just show you the structure of this molecule. Firstly, to indicate that it still has the 1,4-benzoquinone group in it, uh, but that um, because of the different chemical groups that it's nearby, that this 1,4-benzoquinone uh, isn't capable of creating the superoxide radicals in the way that doxorubicin and dornomycin were. And then, uh, also simply because um, the molecule is a beautifully symmetric structure. Okay, so let's see mitoxantrone. Okay, so it starts off with a benzene ring again, so it's very aromatic because it needs to be in order to be extremely planar. So here is our benzene ring, alternating double and single bonds, and you have alcohol groups off both sides. You then have the 1,4-benzoquinone group here, okay, so with these carbonyl groups sticking off up here. And unlike in the amphracyclines, this is not capable of doing the reaction that we've seen where it generates um, superoxide. Okay, and then the final ring in this case, you only have three rings rather than four, is another benzene ring, and then you have the, as you can see, it's beautifully symmetric in long here, and it's not going to lose that, basically. So, uh, here is the final group that you have, nitrogen coming off here, hydrogen, then you have uh, two methylene groups, so CH2, CH2, so this means a carbon with two hydrogens off it, bound to a carbon with two hydrogens off it, then a nitrogen with a hydrogen, and then two more methylene groups, so CH2, CH2, and then finally ending with an alcohol group there. Now I said it retained its beautiful axis of symmetry, so we now need another one of these up here. So nitrogen with a hydrogen off it, two methylene groups coming off this, then a nitrogen with a hydrogen linked to these this ethyl alcohol group here, so two methylene groups and then this alcohol group. So this is the structure of mitoxantrone. Okay, so this drug is very similar to the amphracyclines, doxorubicin and dornamycin. It will still intercalate the DNA, so it will slide in between uh, these uh, organic base pairs and unwind the DNA by causing uh, the um, organic base pair above to try and realign itself above uh, the organic base pair below. Uh, and when you unwind the DNA slightly because of these uh, in this intercalator sitting in between the organic base pairs, then the DNA polymerase and the RNA polymerase enzymes, they can't bind to the unwound DNA. They don't just don't recognize it. So you find that you reduce protein synthesis within these cells and you reduce the ability to replicate the genome. And if you can't uh, copy your proteins and you can't copy your genome, then you can't divide. So it has a very powerful anti-proliferative effect, and that's the basis of its use in as an anti-cancer chemotherapeutic. In addition, this one doesn't generate the uh, free radicals that the amphracyclines, doxorubicin and dornamycin do, and therefore it's less toxic, and you're, the organ that you're specifically worried when you just have plain cytotoxic drugs like doxorubicin and dornamycin is the heart, because the heart has this very low capacity for regeneration. Once you lose a cardiomyocyte, you cannot regrow it. Um, all you can do is basically make the other cardiomyocytes expand. That's known as hypertrophy. And that works for a while, but if you know anything about heart failure, you'll know that gradually these expanded cardiomyocytes just lose the will to live, basically. They become weaker in the long run, and uh, that just propagates the heart failure even further. The heart just goes into a vicious cycle of 
getting weaker and weaker as more and more of the cardiomyocytes try to hypertrophy to increase their strength and it works temporarily but then uh, it, over time they lose their ability to contract and then gradually the heart muscle just becomes weaker, weaker and weaker until the cardiac output can no longer sustain the organs of the body and then you've reached heart failure.